Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is going to explain to you everything you need to know in order to successfully enrich your soil for a thousand years. Now, that's kind of an absurd statement, so let me explain. I'm going to say some things about it, and then I'm going to take you out into the garden and show you exactly how to utilize this beautiful gift of nature. So, first thing we have to understand is what is biochar? So, this can be a very complex topic with a lot of uh, chemistry involved. I'm going to simplify all that into what you need to know in order to use it in the garden. So, biochar, essentially, think of it this way, is biology plus charcoal, real charcoal, as I'll show you in a moment. And without the biology, it's just charcoal, okay? So, this is a piece of uh, charcoal, biochar. Well, it's not biochar yet because we haven't charged it, uh, but it is the final uh, end result of the paralysis, uh, pyrolysis of wood, meaning that it's been burned in a uh, atmosphere. It's been burned in a condition without oxygen. Okay, so normally when you burn wood on a fire, the carbon dioxide, the carbon, gets uh, released to the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide. But when you do it through this technique, I, I think the term is pyrolysis. Uh, when you do it through this technique. You are burning it in a uh, condition, in an environment where there's no oxygen. And so the carbon remains. And so this is pure carbon, okay? And it doesn't break down any further. That's why I say a thousand years, because this can last in the soil for many hundreds, if not thousands of years, because it's already in its elemental state. So uh, now it has been said, now why is it so important in the garden? Okay, because unlike manures and composts and grass clippings and all of that stuff that breaks down, we want it to break down. We want it to become plant available, uh, you know, the nutrients to become available to the plant. Uh, biochar doesn't break down. Okay, so then you would say, well, what good is it then? Think of it like this. The biochar is a high rise condominium for the life in the soil. Yes, it can be bursting with microbial life. Because one of the key components to improving your soil is to create a habitat for the microorganisms. Okay, so if you don't have the habitat for the microorganisms, even if you're applying the fertilizer or the, the microbial solutions and all of that, they're not going to, it's not going to stick. It's not going to catch because the microbes need a home. And so biochar is an ideal home for them because it is set so the carbon forms tiny little crystal passageways, crystalline uh, tunnels, we'll say, that are microscopic. And so much so that it is said that one gram, this is about one gram, if you were to fold it all out, has the same surface area as two tennis courts. Think of that. And so there's all that space for the microbes to inhabit. And that is why it is so valuable. That is also why we never powder it. Okay, guys? When you see online a lot, you, you might see people trying to powder it. We actually don't want to do that. We want that surface area. We don't need it this big by any means or this big, but we want it to be about this big. And I'll show you guys how to do this here in a moment. Now, the other thing is that uh, it's biology plus the charcoal. So if we just put this into the soil, it's going to be a, a vacant high rise condominium. And so it's going to pull nutrients and microorganisms from the soil and they're going to move into here. Okay. So to keep that from happening, uh, we are going to supercharge it first with tons of microorganisms so that it is bursting. It is totally packed to capacity by the time we put it into the soil. And then it is going to be a house for the life in the soil for years and years to come, guys. It's one of the greatest things you can add to the soil. Okay, so how do we get the biochar or the charcoal to make into biochar? Well, in future videos, I'll show you how to make it. When I lived in Northern California, we made it there, but I don't have the facilities to make it here at the moment. So for now, we can go to the store and purchase it, okay? But you have to buy this stuff, all right? Uh, you have to make sure that it says 100% natural and it is, uh, let's see, no fillers, no chemicals. 100% natural hardwood lump charcoal, okay? This is gonna work really good. And it was like 18 bucks maybe for this whole huge thing, which will do the entire garden by far. So uh, let us go out and I'm gonna show you how to supercharge this stuff, how to break it down to the right size. And then when we come back in, I'll tell you some of the specifics. Okay, my friends, first thing we gotta do is locate us some of the all natural hardwood lump charcoal. You do not want briquettes. You wanna make sure there's no fillers and no chemicals. See, these other things are not gonna work. We have to make sure that it is the all natural hardwood lump. And then we're gonna take the hardwood lump and we're gonna pour 
see this is too big this is much too big so we got to break it down a bit so we're going to pour half of a bucket full so that we know how much goes into the bucket and then we are going to take us a uh, hard uh, an old rice bag something or a pillowcase something that is really robust and then we're going to stick it underneath the car of, or the tire of a car and then uh, run over it a number of times reposition it and then run over it again and uh, that is going to pretty much give us this ideal chunk size. So then we're going to put it back into the bucket, being careful not to breathe in the dust. And see, this is ideal. This is the ideal size. Now we're going to add the nutrients. And so we're going to start with a couple of handfuls of the good finished compost, guys, full of nutrients and microbial life. We're going to add two or three handfuls. Now, the next ingredients, guys, you do not have to add every single one of these. But uh, one or two of them is sufficient, but all of them is best, actually. So now we're going to add some of the uh, chicken manure JLF and guys this stuff is super rich in nitrogen and all kinds of vitamins and minerals and microbial life see how dark and nice and thick and rich it is we're going to add that into the stuff then next we're going to take the crop residue fertilizer that's got tomatoes and cabbages and cucumbers and everything in it and we're going to add some of that stuff okay a couple of cups of that next we're going to add some of the high quality leaf mold look at this mycelium guys it is absolutely bursting out of this stuff holding all this stuff together we're going to add a couple of handfuls of the high quality leaf mold and then you know what that is my friends that is the urine and we're going to go ahead and add a few cups of the urine to really supercharge everything with the nitrogen next is going to be the fish fertilizer we're going to add one or two cups of the finished fish fertilizer very rich very potent it doesn't even smell that bad at all because it's finished after about six months next is going to be one of the most important things and this is the jdom jl uh, jms microbial solution we're going to use it right at its peak fill the bucket most of the way with that give it a good stir then we're going to put a lid on it and let it sit for three to five days maybe two weeks if you need to but that's all the longer that you need so here we are about five days later we're going to come back and we're going to start applying this stuff to the soil now there's a number of different ways that we can do this guys and so in this first way i'm going to show you so i uh took the garden plot and i laid a thick layer of leaves over in the fall and then I put these bags over it to help insulate it. And so all winter long, there's been earthworm activity and everything's been really well. So we're going to peel back the, uh, the thick layer of leaves and mulch. It's not decomposed, but that's totally fine, guys. And look what we see. All these worm holes. There is so much worm activity in this soil, guys. It's crazy. Uh, so we're just going to gently pull back this layer of mulch. And then we're going to add, we're going to sprinkle it in there like that. And we're going to sprinkle this on the actual soil. That's where we're putting this. And uh, we're just going to get in there nice and dirty and take the hands and uh, sprinkle it uh, pretty liberally, okay? And then we're going to put the mulch back on top, you see? And we're going to let that sit. So put all the mulch right back on top. The biochar goes in between the, the mulch and the actual soil so that when we go to plant in a few weeks or a month, we're just going to make a small hole in this stuff, in, in this leaf, and then we're going to plant into the actual soil underneath. And that is of utmost importance. We plant into the actual soil. So the biochar goes between these, it sits on the soil and it goes uh, underneath the mulch. Next method is we can take our compost pile and every time that we turn the compost pile, this is the one you saw from my video uh, in the fall where I did the chicken manure, the horse manure and the leaves. And every time we turn this stuff, which is uh, every couple of weeks, we're going to add in uh, some of this biochar uh, or we can just add it in all at once and give it a good stir. But what we're doing here, remember guys, the biochar doesn't break down. So it doesn't really matter if we're, when we mix it in. So we're just gonna mix it in and it's gonna absorb the nutrients and supercharge the compost. And then when we go to use this stuff as compost and as a mulch over the summertime, it's gonna be so rich in organic matter and uh, the microorganisms. This is where it's at, my friends. So there you go, my friends. Now you know how to uh, supercharge the biochar and how to add it to the soil. Now, when are we going to add this to the soil? Well, because it persists for hundreds, if not thousands of years, uh, it doesn't really matter that much. But in order to not disturb stuff, I like to apply it about right now before planting time. Uh, so long as you charge it, guys, don't skip that step because otherwise it will act like a sink and it will absorb nutrients the first season or two. Okay. And we don't want that. We want it to be to enrich the soil. 
So that's pretty much it, my friends. If you feel like you gained something from the video, give it a thumbs up. Share the video with anyone that needs this knowledge. Leave a comment. First thing that comes to mind, just share your thoughts or your experience with biochar. Put it in the comments. Uh, check out the Garden Like a Viking Instagram account where I'm making reels and stuff uh, on the regular now about things I don't want to make a full video about. And uh, I will see you in the future, my friends.